Mm, get a tragic here and oh dear I've got terrible coffee cough going on this is the next Lord of the Rings quest for the Mirkwood cycle this time we are playing uh, what's it called the Dead Marshes now this is one of my most hated quests in the early game not because the quest is particularly bad but because I am just unable to play it. Like, uh, I'll get to it later, but there's basically a modification to how questing works. There's basically two quests, two sets of quests. You've got a quest normally, and then there's another set of quests you have to do to satisfy the forced effect on this golem card. And I just can never, do, like, every time I play, birds are close by. <laughs> but every time I play, I'm just like, completely forget something or I forget to do the second quest and it's exasperated by all these treachery cards out that make you do extra quests and I just find it so confusing I just can never keep it all in my head I always make errors and I've recorded this about seven times I screw it up every time so that's it I'm gonna make one more recording if it if I fuck it up I'm just gonna upload it anyway so let's just keep going and see how we go Okay, so this is a pretty decent opening hand. We have some uh, threat reduction. We've got untap effects. We've got two untap effects. That's awesome. We've got some super questing. And we've even got a dwarven tomb. And we've got a test of will. So this is pretty much as good as an opening hand can get. The only thing that would make it better if this was a permanent card. So I'm going to pass on that mulligan for sure. Meanwhile, over here... We have a near, nah, not a particularly good hand. We do have the Horn of Gondor, which is nice. We've got some attacky stuff. Got a bit of card draw, but you'll note that this deck is only got one lore hero, uh, leadership hero, Prince, and the other two guys are both, uh, you know, tactics. So we'd rather have an opening hand of mostly tactics. So I am going to mulligan this and hope for something better. Come on! Much better. We have Radagast. We have a one drop. We've got a two drop. Much, much better hand. Okay. So, well, that's about that. So we're going to take that. Let's go up to the opening quest. You have followed Gollum's trails for days and are now closing in fast pursuit. In a last-ditch effort to escape you, the creature has fled to the dead marshes. It's basically just saying, put Gollum in the staging area, draw a card per player. So, blammo. Okay, and here we go. When revealed, the first player makes an escape test counting attack power instead of will. Now, let's talk about what an escape test is. An escape test is a special rule that is just for this particular uh, expansion. Just save a camera for that. And what it's basically saying is that it's another quest phase, okay? So you have to choose who you're going to exhaust to commit to the quest. There is then an action window, which is really important, and then you reveal the cards. Now, as you reveal cards, some of them will have escape and then a number. This one says escape three. So if I reveal two cards, you add up the total escape value, and then the amount of cards that you've tapped have to exceed. And that's the important bit, because sometimes, because remember, this only has the sort of, the thing that looks like a skull in the circle there, right? Like if you look at the, just above the text box, there's a little thing that shows you what encounter decks are in the quest. So this one has Winderlands and Iosaron, and it also has the Hunt for Golem one, I mean, the Dead Marshes one itself. Looks like a skull, but that is actually a picture of Golem sitting on a rock near a creek or something. It's just a really weird, but it looks exactly like a skull, right? Anyway, whatever. The point is that escape tests are only on that encounter deck. The other two ones, because they're from the core set, don't have those escape tests, but you still have to beat it. So even if you reveal two of the other cards that have no escape value, so the escape value is zero, Unless you have at least one point, you will fail. So you've got to beat it, is what I'm saying. <coughs> now, all of these effects are on when revealed. And that is why we've got 
Eleanor here, so we can tap her to try and get past a lot of these without doing escape tests. In addition, there's a forced effect on Golem that says at the end of every quest phase, so this is before you place resources, so basically the just before the travel phase, you have to do an escape test between all the players, one card per player, or place tokens on him. Now, if he ever gets eight or more tokens, you have to shuffle him back in the deck, and it can be really hard to pull him out of the deck again. Thematically, we're following him, just continually following him, and if he escapes us, we have to find him again. When you play solo, it's a lot easier to control the deck and just never have him disappear. But the more players you add, the harder it is, particularly in the early game because you've got so many things going on. You've got multiple cards coming out. You've got, you know, only so many resources at the start to place things out. So it's very hard to stop him gaining resources at the start of the game. Ideally, we don't want him to go back into the deck, but at the same time, it's best for him to go back into the deck sort of toward, like, late-ish game, if he does, because it's hard to stop him from going back into the deck when you're playing two or more players. But the point is, for me as a player, I just find this quest really difficult because I've got to remember to do this check here and also these things come out. You might reveal three of these in one turn. So you might do like three quests as well as the original quests and I always just get confused. So I'm going to try not to, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first part is 12 points long and... Now I need to decide whether we're going to... We still have to reveal two cards, remember? And I'm actually going to use Eleanor's ability to try and get rid of this. Because basically, the way the setup works when you're setting up your game is that you choose the first player, then you draw your cards and decide on mulligans. Then after you do 1A is when you actually receive resources and draw the seventh card. So technically at the moment, we have six cards and no resources. But Eleanor herself doesn't require a resource. She can actually tap during this section as a response to use her ability to cancel that effect. So let's tap her and cancel this card and replace it. Your blamo, and we get a much better one. This is also a when revealed effect, but it deals damage to 35 or higher. Both of our Threat levels are under 35, so that's a whiff. Now the second card from the encounter deck is... Boom! Yet another copy of this card, okay? Well, there's nothing we can do about that. We have to do this. So it is. The first player makes an escape, escape test, counting attack instead of will, dealing two cards to the encounter deck. So we are going to tap this guy for two. Uh, this guy for three, beg your pardon. And I'm going to tap this guy for three. So I'm tapping for six. Uh, I'm just going to tap one. I'm tapping for three. So we draw two cards. Escape one and nothing. So we, this is only escape one. We've done a test for three. So we've passed. So all these cards now get discarded. Okay, so we're ready to do our first turn. We can now draw cards and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna spend one resource and place out this bloke. And over this side of the world, I'm gonna go one, two, and place out my untapper on Aowen. Now, this guy's got an ability. After Aragon commits to a quest, spend one resource from his pool to ready him. So if I just spend a resource, I can just add the two quest points like that. And that is the same as tapping him. And then I'm going to tap her. And that's going to give us six quest power. Blamo. Impassable Bog, these have a an escape test on them, but Victory Point 7, they've also got this ability to place one resource token on Golem for each location in the staging area. So it's very tempting, because it's only one threat, right? 
But you can end up with like five of these up here, and then another one comes out, and it's like five points. Remember, eight points, and he escapes. And the next one, bam. Okay, place two resource tokens on Golem. Any player may exhaust one law hero to reduce this effect to one resource token. I do not have any law heroes. I've also got no no coins and Eleanor remember is tapped from the beginning of the game so we can't stop this so that is two resource tokens on Golem. Okay so not a particularly great start. Boom. But we have now got five tokens. That's one, two, three, four, five. Now it's the end of the quest phase. So I'm going to tap this card, you know, to ready Eowyn, and then tap her for four, five, six, and let's also tap him, seven, eight, nine, and we draw two cards. Well, escape five, but we are questing for nine, remember, so it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a pass. So Golem does not get any extra tokens, and that's the force effect. Now we are going to travel to this location here and reset. And I've done my first turn, hopefully without any mistakes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go one, two, and place out this guy here. Bam. We're going to go quest, quest. Quest and one resource to go double quest. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and place out this bloke. We'll give him his own resource counter. And we are currently questing for plus 10. It's a pretty decent number. I'm going to leave... Uh, I'm going to leave one quester up. So we go draw Blamo and Blamo. This guy has Surge. Your Blamo. When revealed, I tap Eleanor to cancel that. Blamo. Okay. So that is plus six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. Now let's have a look at what we've got here. The Fen Myers. Mm, don't really have to worry too much about that. I don't want to travel here because you have to actually place tokens on him. We definitely can kill this bloke. No problem. This guy's a little hard. I love the art of this one too, but remove two damage from the giant marshworm at the end of each round. Six, seven, eight to kill. So what have you got here? We have a total of six, seven, eight, uh, six, seven there. What's he attacking for? He's attacking for three. This guy can take four. Meanwhile, over here, we might have to take one in the face. Yeah, okay, so this guy is threat 31, this guy is threat 29. What that means is this player can optionally engage the worm, and then the forced engagement will only trigger off him because he's 31 and he's 29. So even though he's not the first player, we can get both these guys to go down like this. But before we do all that, we still need to do our final thing. So I'm going to tap Eleanor for four and Aragon for two. That's four, five, six. And we do another escape test for Golem. Wow. So that's another fiver. But remember, we're questing for six. So that escape test is also passed. Nice work. And now we have to deal with all this shenanigans. So, 30, 36. Remember, these cards are dealt to 
the uh, highest threat first. So I'm going to tap you and flip over this one. Okay, nothing. So he's attacking for one. He's defending at one, so no damage. Then I'm going to do attack with uh, defend with this guy. Flip. Nothing. Attack with three, defending at zero. So he is actually killed. And now this guy's ability triggers. After a character leaves play, ready him. So he gets readied. We then tap you and ready this bloke and go three, six, nine, attack. Kill, uh, not him. Kill this bloke. And we get two tokens on here. Okay. And draw more cards. Right. So I'm going to go one, two, place out a blocker. And we're going to do the same kind of questing. This time I'm not going to quest with him because we've got no easy way to untap him. Unless I have something cool over this side of the world, which I do. First, of course, we spend one and go blam, blam. And I quest with you. And I think I'm going to go one, two, and quest with this bloke. And because I'm questing with the escort, I can also quest with the prince. Because the escort leaves play as soon as he finishes questing, which will ready the prince. That gives us a nice high 12 quest power. So let's draw. Bam. Okay, so when revealed, place one resource token on Golem for each location in the staging area. There is one location. So that is yet one more coin. And draw another one. So East Blight. Wow. No more monsters. That's good. We are plus 10 though. So that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's another 8, another 4 onto here to finish that one. And 6 goes here to finish that one. Okay, and that leaves us at 11. So this one is at 12 to complete. So let me think for a sec. So what I think I'm going to do, I've only got I only need one more progress token. So I'm going to discard from my hand this guy. Bam! That's going to give us one extra progress token, which sets him to twelve. Now that all that is done, we get to clear our locations. So this gets stuck into the victory display. We've got 12 here, so this instantly clears. Yes, yes, said Gollum, all dead and rotting, elves and men and orcs, the dead marshes. There was a great battle long ago, yes, so they told him when Smeagol was young, when I was young before the precious came. It was a great battle, tall men with long swords and terrible elves and orcs shrieking. They fought on the plain for days and months at the black gates, but the marshes have grown since then, swallowed up the graves, always creeping, always creeping. <laughs> awesome. Whatever. Completed. Bonk. After a tiring pursuit through the treacherous marshland, you have cornered Gollum and move in for the capture. Okay. You blammo. Forced. After the stage is defeated, the first player chooses a player. That player must pass an escape test, dealing one card from the encounter deck for each resource token on Gollum to capture him. If Gollum is not captured at this time, reset the quest back to 1B, which is uh, this, this one here. Okay. Now that the quest phase is over, before the travel phase... We are going to do our thing. So this thing for starters gets discarded. Which readies this bloke. 
but we're going to quest for four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine. So we're questing for nine. We draw two cards for the escape test. Escape two, we're questing for nine, so that's a, a pass. And we are forced to travel to the East Blight, which is unfortunate. Meanwhile, over here, tap you and ready you. And then going to tap him to defend for two. This guy gets a card. He's attacking for one, defending at two, no damage. Then we attack for three, six, which definitely kills this bloke. And he's shuffled back into the deck, and we get two tokens on the East Blight. Okay, your blammo, and your blammo. Okay. Haven't got any of our songs or anything. So let's go tap, give him two resources. And I'm gonna go one, two, play out you. Oops, uh, like so. Meanwhile, over here, there's not a lot we can do here. Not a lot of interest. So what I think I will do is just uh, go quest and quest. That's questing for nine. Bam. Bam. We have nothing else going on. What I am going to do though is I'm going to spend one resource and I'm going to sneak attack the descendant of Thorindor. Going to put two wounds on this bloke. And this is still in the questing phase, remember? Okay, so that is four. We're plus four. There's already two progress tokens here, so that means this is cleared. And we're going to use. I'm going to discard this card to add one more token, like so. Now it is the end of the quest phase, so we're back in the travel phase, and if you look at this card, it says, at the end of the phase, if that ally is still in play, return it to your hand. So, boom, this goes back in my hand, which places another two tokens on this guy, which kills him. Uh, what am I going to do here? I'm thinking I might just not travel to any of these locations and just try and pass it. You know what I should have done? I should have let this guy... See, the thing is, there's so few shadow cards. This guy just always bounces back up into the staging area. So it was very hard for me to get the two progress tokens from Legolas onto him. Now, here's that situation. Have I done the escape test for Golem this turn? I'm pretty sure I did, didn't I? Yeah, I need some token that I can flip to say that I've done it or not, because I just always forget. <coughs> Actually, it looks like there's an error in the mod here. Seven victory. I think I've done the, the, the escape test, so we'll just keep going. The question is what to do now. Definitely don't want to go to this thing. I think I'm just going to leave it up there and just try and pass it. So let's... Uh, no, I couldn't have done the escape test because I haven't done any of this yet. So, yeah, let's tap you. And we go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We draw two cards. Five. So we've passed... Golem's escape test. Okay, and now let's refresh. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have done... I forgot to cast Valiant Sacrifice when this guy left play. That's really stupid of me. Let's go Blam. Place out this guy. And I think I'm going to go... One, two, three, four... Five and place out this bloke again quest and quest I might not quest with him meanwhile over here there's nothing we can do so let's spend resources and go bam bam so if I just quest like this we are only plus two so then I go bam and bam that gives me plus six Let's try that. Click and click. Okay, perfect. So we're plus two and nothing comes out. So that is one, two. We are now at three progress, which is all we need to complete this stage. Remember, completing a quest actually is an interrupt. So this, the whole game pauses while we now finish this forced effect, which is overriding this. Okay, so this is completed. We now do a final escape test. There are three tokens, so we choose one player to do that escape test. You'll note that we didn't quest with this bloke, so we should be able to pass this. So we're going four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're questing for nine. There's not, nothing we can do to help it. Let's go. One, two, and third card is, so nothing, one, and nothing. So there you go. That escape test is passed, which means 2B is complete. We have captured Gollum. Oops, wrong there. We have captured Gollum. Let's stick him on Aragorn. Boom, end of the quest. So we did pretty well. We managed to get through that without any of the real harsh threats. You'll notice that there was, uh, you know, there's some pretty nasty monsters like the cave troll, I mean the hill troll, and my uh, favorite monster in the core set, the marsh adder. Don't know why I love this card so much. So it can go a lot worse than that. I have another deck for this as well, because I did a number of different decks. I might put both decks in it. The other deck is got is more lore dependent. It uses uh, Denethor, and the idea of using Denethor is so you can scry the deck more often. Uh, I think I've actually got a save game with him. I've been working on the solo version of the table, by the way, for those people that want a quick view this is for solo games so it basically has like these uh these will be like player buttons so you go it'll, it'll look like that when you load up the mod and then you'll go like player one or player two so that's player one. Oh, that's player two big pardon and so forth whatever the point is this isn't the file let's try and find the one with the I just I'll just load the deck up. Uh, version three, yeah, this is the one. So this deck is a work in progress, but I think it has a better chance of beating the quest because you can control the encounter deck using Denethor. And I think the other deck is sort of similar. Because as you can see, there's not a lot of combat, really. I mean, there's those nasty worms and there's a few large things. But if you're using a lore deck, you can use the traps to kind of control that without having to worry about too hard about attacking them. So I think this deck is actually better, but I haven't tuned it basically have a quick look at it though just to show it off I won't play another game I'm just gonna 
show the the deck. Okay, so again we're using Aragorn and we're using the Prince because they both have built-in untap effects. This, uh, whoops, did I load up the same deck twice? Uh, yes, I did. I don't know why I did that. I'm an idiot. Yeah, so we've got the same deal here, the two quest the two questing the questing deck. This one has Eleanor as well, so you can tap those cards to cancel the when revealed. And you can see there's quite a lot of uh, a, a a little bit too like at the moment there's a little too much red in this deck. It's see that's a bad hand. But it's basically the same card. Look at that, terrible. So yeah, this deck needs a lot of work, but it's basically the same idea. It's a rabbit run deck that is Rohan based and it's got a little bit of uh, Legolas in it. Over here, we have the same deal. So we've got our Law, we will have Burning Brand and all other kind of things. Now, like I said, this deck isn't finished because I kind of just got sick of playing it because I'm trying to move it, move along a bit quicker into the more interesting quests. A lot of the people who are watching this have said to me that they enjoy watching it because they enjoy my history with Lord of the Rings and the fact that I know the game really well. But they're all basically saying, you know, just get to the point, come on. Where, where's the nightmare quest? Where's the newer quest? I understand where you're coming from, but, you know, one, I've got to make the mod, and two, you know, it's a progression series, so... We're going to try and get through it. But I probably will finish this deck and add it to the mod anyway. Whatever. The point is, there is the deck you've seen. And there is the uh, the other deck you haven't seen. And again, if you want to name those decks, just let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll name them myself. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, by the way, just a quick thing for people who use my mod. A couple of changes. Uh... I've changed the way the spawning works. So now the spawning will always remember exactly. So now when you spawn, sometimes when you used to spawn, if you drag your mouse too quickly, you'd press the button, you'd move your mouse, and it would drop where you moved it, but it no longer does that. It'll always spawn at the point the mouse was when you first pressed the button. And I've also done it so if you draw your cards, like so I go... Uh, so I need five, you know, shadow cards. If I just press it five times, one, two, three, four, five, it actually brings them out. That's the first one here. And it just brings them out and spaces them for you, which is pretty cool. And I've also added hotkeys for attack and defense so you don't have to drag them out as much. So yeah, the mod is constantly evolving and also you saw that I've been working on the setup options for first player, solo player. So I'm adding solo player and then I'll add multiplayers after that. And the, the mod is complete all the way up to Mirkwood cycle. So once I finish Mass Gillian, I'll start on the Daredevil cycle. 
And that's when the game really starts to open up. A lot of really cool cards in Daradel from some of my favourite quests are in Daradel. Shadow of Flame, you know, and some of the actual ones in the core set of Daradel. Just top stuff. Anyway, I am completely just tragically blathering, so I will see you guys next time.